Welcome in my ASVAB party people. You're in for a treat today. My name is Coach Anderson and in this video, this is gonna serve as a recording to one of our most recent classes when we did circle word problems. So if you hate geometry, if you're struggling with area, radius, circumference, all those topics that we feel like, you know, hey, we know of them, but we have no idea how to work it out. Well, then you're in luck because this class is gonna show you exactly how to work these formulas. And number two, even better, how to recognize the pieces of these formulas inside of word problems. We all know that that's the goal. We wanna get better at word problems and remember that memorizing just won't cut it. We have to understand what we're doing and that's what this video is all about. So I'm excited for you, I'm ready for you to get this done. But remember, if you like what you see, make sure to like it. And at any point, if you have a light bulb moment, make sure to shout out us in the comment section, letting us know exactly how we're helping you out. We're here to help you succeed my math part of people. So get ready to enjoy this entire class recording on circle work problems. Make sure to try every single problem out. We'll put a timer there on the screen for you to try, and then we'll review every single one. So with that said, let's ace the ASVAB, let's get the scores we want, and those jobs we deserve. Let's get cracking. So, welcome to our session on circles and circle word problems. So, a part of people, two main things that we're gonna go over, and we're gonna really build that confidence on. First things first, those definitions. We have to know those definitions and formulas, like, Radius, diameter, area, circumference, we gotta know all that. But more importantly, because we've all been there, we've all sat in classes where teachers have drilled the idea of the formulas in your head, but then, you know, a few days later, or if ever, we rarely feel like we have a true grasp on the concept. And that's because we need to go from rote memorization, the formula, to actual comprehension understanding how these pieces of these formulas relate to each other, and that's step two right here. So being able to identify what you're solving for and how to connect those dots. Understanding what keywords mean area, circumference, for, uh, radius, and diameter, knowing that will give you that big advantage down the road. So with that said, let's go ahead here and let's get started with our main notes here for circles. So my party people, First things first, let's just go ahead and take a closer look right over here. Let's take a closer look right over here. So that's a circle. You see your radius labeled in red, your diameter labeled in blue. And long story short, here's the idea. Your diameter is going to be the distance all the way across the circle. You gotta go through the middle. You know, you can't just go ahead and say, Hey, that's the diameter. No, that's not how that works. You have to go through the center of the circle for you to be able to call it the diameter. Yes or no, my party people? Does that make sense? I'm gonna ask that a few times, but does that make sense so far? The diameter is just the, how wide the circle is, but you just have to go through the center. You can't pick some random spot and be like, yeah, that's the diameter, or that's the diameter, or that's the diameter. No, you have to go through the center. Have to go through the center. Now. Thank you for the participation there. Now, next up to kind of follow up on that, the reason that it's called the diameter, my party people, those of you in my word knowledge classes with Coach Sheena, what does the prefix di mean? What does the prefix di mean? Right, the prefix di means two. And so what does that mean here? The diameter is the same thing as saying two of the radius. And why is that true? Well, guess what? My party people look. If I take a look right over here, let me use a red highlighter. If I have one radius here, which is again, the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. If I draw another radius, just continuing on, look at that. I have two of those radiuses together or more properly known as radii, but we have two of these radii together, everybody, what do you see here? Two of these radiuses or two of these radii is the same as what idea that we just went over. Two of these radii is the same as what? Exactly, it's the same as one diameter. Because when you think about it, just think about it sincerely. The radius goes to the center, so does the diameter. The radius is the edge to the center, 
if you do another radius from the center to the edge, two radiuses make up the diameter. So for those of you who are wondering, oh man, I have, I found the diameter, but the question's asking me for the radius, coach, what do I do? You have to think about it visually, or at least in some capacity that allows you to really emphasize this relationship when you need to. So for example, everybody, we're gonna play a little game real quick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, on the side over here, I'm gonna give you one of the two. I'm gonna give you the radius or the diameter. And as quickly as you can, you're going to give me the number that is the missing unit. So for example, if I were to say, hey, the radius equals two, everybody, you would say that the diameter is what? As quickly as you can, as quickly as you can. Again, let that brain fire off. Great job, everybody. So we see that, again, a couple of people said one, the majority said four, and this is where we can really fine tune that understanding to match this. The answer will be four. Let's go ahead and just reinforce this visually. Again, let's, we like drawings, right? Let's go ahead and make use of them. So if my radius is two, well, my diameter goes all the way across, it's double that. Radius two, radius two, the whole diameter has to be four. Right there. Okay, so is anybody else here seeing a black screen on your end for me? Just curious real quick. Is anybody seeing a blank black screen? Shanika, you are, but nobody else. Okay, so Shanika, it seems to be an issue on your end. Just a quick pause, everybody. If you are using an iPhone, Shanika, uh, make sure to swipe left and right because you might be looking at um, somebody else's screen when you signed in. So just try swiping left and right or if you're sideways up and down, see if that helps. If you're, okay, you're on the computer, are you on the Zoom app or are you online? Um, I would recommend downloading the Zoom app. And if that's what you're using and it's not working, I would simply quit out of the entire application and then refresh and come back in, see if that helps. Yeah, I would definitely just quit the app and try to come back in. I got y'all. See if that works. And if anything, the recording will be available first thing tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, I can't be a technician at this moment, but I do appreciate your patience. So with that said, everybody, let's go ahead and dive back in here. No worries, I got you. So let's dive back in here. Great job, the answer's four. And if we think about it with reasoning, again, the diameter is two of those radiuses or radii. Okay, next question. Let's see if I can trick you guys. Let's see if I can trick y'all. If I tell you that the... Instead, this time, if I tell you that the radius is five, diameter, go. What's the diameter? What's the diameter? What's the diameter? What do we have? What is the diameter? What is our diameter? Yeah, our diameter will be 10. If the radius is five, remember, if the radius right over here is five, Remember that the diameter goes all the way across, so that's gonna be five here, five there, so that'll be a 10 total. That'll be a 10 total. Hey, no worries. Hey, Michael, no worries. It takes time and practice, boss. You can't expect to be good at everything on your first try. No worries. Next up, let's go ahead and try next one here. Let's say that we have a diameter of 18. What is my radius? What is my radius? Thought I could get you with that one, but it looks like the majority of us stood firm, stood strong. Yes, the answer will be nine. The radius is nine. Because again, think of it like this. The diameter, again, diameter, di meaning two, means that 18 is double the radius. So what's, do you double to get 18? Nine. Nine and nine makes 18. And there we are. Let's go ahead and do this two more times. These, I'm gonna go back to back, five seconds apart. Okay, let's go ahead and say, radius equals 11, diameter, give me. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good, 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 good. Diameter is 22. Okay, let's go ahead and say, we have a diameter of 100. What is my radius? Go. Radius is what? Close to perfect, close to perfect, close to perfect. We see the majority of us said 50. 
we have a couple of folks who said uh, 200, and that's because the confusion there was we believed that the diameter was actually the radius. So remember, the diameter is the whole thing. The radius is half. Diameter is the whole thing, right over here. Diameter is the whole thing. The radius is half. The radius is half. So in this case, yes, that would be 50. Okay, so with that said, my math party people, did we find that useful? Was that useful for you just to get that quick practice in? I got y'all. I got y'all. You know, I really want to warm you up to the idea, to the fact that radius and diameter are two completely different ideas. One, you know, in terms of the calculation. So like if you're doing a problem and you're using a formula that will give you the radius, but the problem asks you for the diameter, I'm telling you right now, I'm calling it right now, 99 times out of 100, your first time doing it, you're gonna get so excited that you even found an answer with your formula that you're not even gonna double check that you're solving for the right thing. And so whatever you get, you'll be like, yeah, I'm done. But it turns out that you actually needed to double that answer to get to your diameter, which is what they were asking for. So again, we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk about this the entire class, um, but I'm glad I could give you that little preview, that little warm up um, to make this happen. So next up over here, go ahead and take these notes down. These are the formulas that we are gonna be working with. So long story short, everybody, if you had a formula that says, hey, your answer equals A plus B, all you would do is grab A, grab B, throw it in there, add them together, and you're done. Now that's a very simplified version of what this is, but that's all we're really looking at. With our formulas, we just need to know what the pieces mean and how to throw them together and how to solve for any part of the formula that we want to. That's the flexibility that we should be aiming for. We need to be able to be flexible enough to solve for any part of our formula. So go ahead and take these notes down. Number one, the area of a circle is going to be pi times your radius squared. Again, this is going to be multiplication, pi times your radius squared. So, quick reminder, uh, squared. Everybody, what does it mean to square something? What does it mean to have this two right over here? What does that mean? What does that mean to square something? Right, well, not double it, be very careful, not doubling it, but multiplying it by itself. Doubling is right over here, times two. Squaring something is multiplying it by itself two times. So here's what I mean. If I were to go ahead and show you, let's go ahead and say two times five, well, that's just gonna be 10. When we look at five squared, that's the same thing as five times five. So two fives is factors multiplied together, and five times five is 25. Very different answers, very different answers. So I wanna make sure that my party people here understand that when we say square, we are multiplying that number by itself, and when we're doubling, that's just multipl multiplying by two as we normally uh, see. Boom. Sounds great. So I'll give you a few moments to go ahead and write that down if you need to be refresh on, on that yourself. But then the next formula, circumference. The circumference of a circle is gonna be pi multiplied by the diameter. But there is also another uh, version of this formula. There is another for, uh, version of this formula. And I'll go ahead and show you actually right now. Everybody, circumference C equals pi times diameter. What did we say the relationship is between the diameter and the radius? There is a relationship, right? What did I say that relationship is? What did I say that relationship is? The diameter is what of the radius? Is it half? Is it double? What did coach say? The diameter is the radius doubled. Yeah, the radius is the whole thing, or the diameter is the whole thing. So you need to double the radius to get to the diameter. Absolutely. So allow me to go ahead and write out the uh, different version of this. I mean, he's white. So what I'm saying is you can replace the diameter right over here. You can say you have circumference equals pi times two times the radius. 
again, the diameter is double the radius. So all I did here, all I did was just say, hey, look, if I want to find the circumference, I can use the diameter or I can use the circumference. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. We can have either one of these formulas. Circumference equals pi times diameter, or you can say circumference equals pi times two times radius. Another way that you may see it is going to be two pi r. So that's gonna be right over that. That's another way of looking at it. Pi is actually just a value. And I can write this out over here for us. Pi is just gonna be a value. Pi is approximately 3.14. So there are gonna be times where the problem will tell you, keep pi as pi, don't actually give it a number. Sometimes it'll say approximate the value of pi, which would be 3.14. So let me know if that makes sense. Again, pi is just a number. It's just a number. We just use pi to represent it because in truth, pi is so long of a number, it doesn't ever end, that we can't ever hope to communicate with anything that includes the number pi. Yeah, no way. So, yep, we just use pi to replace it, but it's like 3.1412 something, something, something. Goes on for ever, literally. So, no worries, Jonathan. So if we're starting to process this, because obviously this feels like a lot of information, I don't blame you at all. Let me go ahead and just break this down for us in summary. Number one, we talked about the radius and the diameter. Remember, diameter is the whole thing. Radius, just half of it. Di means two, both of them together. So, the formulas that we went through are four, technically four, because there's two versions of circumference, but just four formulas. For area, area equals that number pi times the radius squared. Part two, circumference. We have two different formulas. Feel free to write both of them down. We will go ahead and exchange these, but it's gonna be pi times diameter or two pi r, two pi times the radius. But right now, again, just write these formulas down even if you're feeling overwhelmed, because I promise you, as we get into the practice, it's gonna be a lot easier to process it as you see physically what you need to do. And then lastly, our diameter, right over here. Diameter is double the radius. This is something that you need to be able to express that you understand at any given moment, no matter what. So when I say, hey, here's my radius, what's the diameter? Or here's the diameter, what's the radius? You gotta be quick. I expect you to be ready for that. Yes, so two times 3.14, that'd be 6.28. And then whatever else you're multiplying that by, yeah, absolutely, Terrell. So with that, let's now move forward here to some practice. Or before we get to the practice, actually, um, this is just another version of what I just went over with you. So let me zoom in actually a little more. Uh, please let me go in a little more there. Okay, cool. So feel free to take a screenshot of this. I'm gonna highlight the most important bits of it. So again, radius is half of the diameter. Radius is half the diameter. Or the same way, if you just flip the uh, reasoning, the diameter is double the radius, either way. And this is just the mathematical way of looking at it. But again, just expressing it in very different ways. Next up, we have our formulas for circumference. And remember that circumference is kind of like the same idea as perimeter. Circumference is the distance around the circle. Perimeter is the distance around the shape. So long story short, the reason that we don't just say perimeter of the circle is because perimeter applies to shapes with sides. Circles technically don't have sides. And then lastly, here is our formula for the area. And again, we just said pi r squared. And remember that radius squared means radius multiplied by the radius. And there we go. So when you're ready to just go ahead and start getting some practice to really get this settled in, just type ready in the chat box. And so would it be wrong to add more decimal points of pi when using pi in an equation. So Jordan, actually what I would caution here is look out for what the problem is directing you to do because there will be problems in this class and on the actual test itself where you're using pi, but you don't have to actually turn it into its approximated form, 3.14. No, sometimes they'll just tell you, hey, pi, just leave it as pi. You'd be treating it like X. And yeah, it's just a variable, just sits there and you just 
do nothing with it. That's fine. So I'll show you those examples. I got your back. Sweet. So it looks like we are ready to party. So let's go ahead and move forward here. I'm going to do another five second countdown, take a screenshot before we move on. All right, here we go. Will we have to use the fraction form two? 20, 22 over seven is the fraction form. Um, I mean, they'll tell you actually, that's the thing. Anytime that an approximation is used for anything, they have to tell you which version to use. So you'll see like this first problem right over here, you'll see right over here where I say, use the approximated form 3.14. If they show you or tell you to use the fractional form, they have to tell you use pi equals 22 over seven. So that's the advantage that you get when it comes to um, working with pi. The problem will tell you to leave it the same, to use 3.14 or 22 over seven. Yep, the problem will tell you. So Jay, let me know if that makes sense. All right, so yeah, no problem. So my party people, what you're gonna see as we practice these problems, you're gonna see the topic that we're kind of working under right over here. RD to area means radius or diameter to the area. So you know what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to get the area and that's gonna be shown even clear right over here. What is the area of the hula hoop? Okay, and we know that this is a circular hula hoop because they give us a radius. But we know it's a circle that we're dealing with. Everybody, what's the formula for the area of a circle? Hit me with it in the chat box and we'll move from there. What is the formula for the area of a circle? Pop quiz time, who knows it? Who can look at their notes the fastest? Pi times radius squared, pi times radius squared. I know more than two people know it. Go ahead, keep it up. Pi times radius squared. So I would definitely prefer if you use that up arrow, unless you are on your phone, then again, I, I understand that it's not as easy to type in those characters. Yep, and there it is. So here's what I just did, everybody. When it comes to word problems, you know that the first thing you need to do is read the question first. If this is your first class with me, well, again, the first thing you wanna do with word problems is read the question first. When we read the question, we saw what is the area of the hula hoop? And that tells me instantly, if we're trying to find area, there's a formula. You need to know what shape you're dealing with. The moment you know what shape you're dealing with, you can go right on ahead and say, hey, here's the formula. You guys have graciously given me that formula. So I'll go ahead and write it here. The area equals pi times the radius squared. So before I continue, even though I'm here walking you down the road here step by step, who here is a little nervous about dealing with this problem right now? Who here is a little nervous? That's fair. That's fair. Geometry is not something that even 60% of high schoolers do well on in terms of standardized metrics. So it's okay to feel a little nervous. Trust me, I got your back. But here's what I want you to really focus on to get ourselves out of that anxious hump. What we wanna focus on is not the formula, but notice how I work with the information. There's two ways you can think about it. Number one, it's identifying the information. And number two, it's processing the mathematics. So I'm gonna start with number one. And in this question, it's gonna be particularly easy when I say, hey, uh, I'm trying to find the area. And everybody, if I'm trying to find the area, they already tell me what to use for pi 3.14. So what's the only other thing that I need to fill in before I'm ready to solve? What's the thing I need to fill in? Donaldson, you're on it today. Yep, the radius. We need to know what the radius is so we can plug in the radius. And then from there, we can do the math. So, boom, we need to know the radius so we can plug that in. Look, just take it nice and easy. I wanna find the area, I got my formula, need to get the radius. The radius right here is four feet. Right there, the radius is four feet. So what I'll do is I'll replace the radius with four 
and rewrite everything out. Area equals pi times the radius squared. Now, everyone, what did they say to replace pi with? What does this problem say to replace pi with? Yeah, 3.14. So we'll go ahead and replace pi right over here. Again, they say use pi equals 3.14. So I'll go ahead and replace that as well over here. And that's all you're looking at. That is all you're looking at here. And I know for some of us, dealing with exponents, dealing with decimals, that can be hard. I know. I get it. I understand. But we got to deal with it. And we have to know the order of operations and confidently. So everybody, 4 squared, what's that going to be? It's going to be 8, right? Ah, uh, Shani, I see that. Yep, I see the mistake. Yeah, so it's not going to be 8. It's going to be 16. Because remember, squaring something does not mean multiplying by 2. Squaring something means multiplying that number by itself, showing itself 2 times. So 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So what we have here is our area equals 3.14 times 16. Again, after the setup, it's really just about math, getting the business. So now we have 3.14 times 16. I'll go ahead and just do that over here. 3.14 times 16. And remember, when we're working with decimals, it's a two-step process. Number one, ignore the decimal, just multiply. Step two, bring the decimal places back. So here we are. 4 times 6, 24. 1 times 6 is 6, carry the 2 is 8. 3 times 6 is 18. The next line will have 4 times 1, 1 times 1, 3 times 1. Add that together, we get 4, 12, carry the 1, 8, and 4. So 4, 8, 2, 4. And so what we'll do at the end is bring those decimals back 1, 2, 1, 2. So my area equals 48.24, and that'll be square feet. And there we go. There we go. Again, remember to think about it as two halves of torture. The first half is going to be translating the English into math. And the other part is going to be actually doing the math. That's where, again, if you're not as confident with working with decimals or order of operations or solving equations, it's going to reveal itself here. And again, if you're not quite confident with pointing out keywords and translating, it'll show up more so in the beginning of the problem. So, with that said, what was that, boss? It is 1884. Did I miss something? Oh, let's go ahead and make sure. If I miscalculated, that's on me. Let's see. 24, boom, 8, sounds good. That's 18. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why I wrote 16. I literally said 18 as I did it. So, I'll just correct that real quick, my party people. Appreciate you being patient. So, that'll just be 4, 12, carry the 1. That'll be 10. And so then that'll make another one here, making this 50. Appreciate y'all. Boom. No, thank you guys for pointing it out. I expect you guys to point it out because I know how proud you guys must feel when the person that's been teaching you makes a mistake that you catch before I catch it myself. Because you guys know, when I catch my mistakes, I typically catch them pretty fast. This just shows that I've had too many tacos today. I've been filming a lot today. So <laughs> with that, appreciate you guys being good sports about that. So let's go ahead and replace this. And we're good. 50.24. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Oh, no, you're good. Because I wouldn't have even found the right answer here anyway. I would have got, I would have zoomed out and I would have been like, what? And then, yeah, then more panic and chaos. So with that, there we go. The answer here would be D. Yes, how the turntables. I know, I know. So, my party people, before we move on, I really want to make sure you understand my premise here of what I'm saying in terms of preparing for these types of questions. Number one, translating the English into the formula. And step two, solving for what's missing within the formula. Do we understand those as the two main steps when it pertains to geometry word problems? Does that make sense, everybody?
Cool. I'm glad it makes sense. And yes, it is very, very, very likely that the drywall at your local facility will be uh, out of stock very shortly as I buy them all after that incident. So <laughs> we're good. So with that, remember everybody, just pay attention to this. Step one, translate English into formula. Step two, solve the formula. Let's take a look at this next one here where we're not going forward. We're not given the radius to find the area here we are given the area and we need to work backwards to find the radius. So I wanna show you that we're gonna be using the same exact formula. We're talking about the same exact thing, but paying attention to context will tell you which way you're working in terms of setting it up and solving. So my party people, here we go. Everybody, first things first, read the question. It says, what is the radius of the coin? My party people, Notice how that doesn't say that we're talking about a circle. They do say that we're talking about a coin, which is a circular object in nature, but the fact that they give you the radius, they tell you what is the radius, implies inherently that you're discussing a circle. Yes or no, does that make sense? If a question is asking you to find the radius of something, they're implying that you're talking about something circular. Good. And I'll repeat that a few more times throughout the class because I know that making assumptions in math is sometimes kind of, you know, dangerous feeling. But trust me, there are certain things that you can assume is true in certain math problems. So we're trying to find the radius. We want to find the radius. And now we need to understand, well, okay, trying to find radius. What formula am I supposed to use? Is it circumference? Is it area? Is it this? Is it that? Now, I told you what it may be in this question, but notice that the word area doesn't pop up anywhere in the problem. So, my party people, can someone share a way that they know that we're talking about area here? Yeah, the word surface, definitely gonna be a nice clue. And I'm gonna say clue, I'm not gonna say a definitive key phrase, I'll say a clue. What's going to be the true definitive uh, phrase that gives this away, everybody? What's the true definitive key phrase here that, that assures you that you're dealing with area? Right there, Jay, Israel. Yeah, that's right. Square centimeters right here. It covers nine pi square centimeters. So let me actually erase this. The surface and covering, yeah, those are clues, but this is really going to be the meat right there. Square centimeters. Remember, perimeter would just be regular centimeters. Area, square centimeters. Volume, three-dimensional. Cubic, three on top of that. Since area is two-dimensional, you have a second dimension, square centimeters, which is red as this. It's red as centimeters squared. That's two-dimensional, and that equals area. Again, two-dimensional meaning centimeters by centimeters, square centimeters. That's what that means. That's what that implies. And I know I'm, I dove a little more deeper than I had to, but just want to make sure we touch on all bases. So, pop quiz, everybody, what's the area of a circle? Go. Area of a circle, I've talked long enough, now you produce. What is the area of a circle? Type that out, hit send, don't wait for anybody else. I want to see who can be the top 20 to answer this. No worries, iPhone. Go ahead and write the formulas out as we use them. And I'll make sure to star next to them so you can put them off to the side. I got you. All right, pi times the radius squared. Now, I want you to give me the entire thing. Not just pi r squared. I want you to write out area equals pi r squared. Go ahead and write that out. Area equals pi r squared. And the reason that I'm being such a stickler for this right now is because oftentimes people don't know that you can work backwards because they don't write the first part. They don't write it as an equation. They just write it as a phrase, as an expression, pi r squared. If you write it as area equals pi r squared, you will see plain and clearly that, yeah, yeah, this actually um, is something that I can manipulate and work with. So here's the formula. I'm going to put a star next to it. Area equals pi times the radius squared. Okay, so 
there's our formula. We know that we're looking for the radius. Everybody, can you tell me again what was the area that we were given? What was the area that we were given? Area was, do, 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 do. No, not 3.14. Yeah, we were given nine pi. Yep, we're given nine pi. So it's gonna be nine pi right here that we'll fill in equals pi times the radius squared. All right, everybody. What do we see that we can do? I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this as an equation. What am I trying to get by itself, everybody? What was it again? What am I trying to get by itself? Well, the area is already by itself. The nine pi is already by itself. What is it that we're solving for, everybody? What is the problem telling us to solve for? What is the what? Yeah, what is the radius? We want to know what the radius is. So we need to understand this as an equation. Let me go ahead and just underline this right here. We're looking for the radius. What's in the way of the radius? We see that the radius is being squared. And we see that we're multiplying by pi. The thing that's furthest away is the pi because squaring exponents, they come first, then multiplication after. So if we're working backwards, take that out first. Take the last step out first. And so before we can get to that Corrales, we got to take care of the pi. Everybody, if we're multiplying by pi with the radius, what do we do to both sides to get rid of that pi? Absolutely. Take that question mark out of there. Say it with confidence. Yeah, we're going to be dividing both sides by pi. So watch this. Again, we've, we've learned this, solving equations, working backwards. So instead of multiplying by pi, I'm going to divide by pi. Everybody over here on the right side, since I have pi in the numerator, pi in the denominator, what's going to cancel out? Yeah, the pi is going to cancel out. And so don't freak out when I say this literally again, the same exact way, everybody we got a pi up top, we got a pi in the bottom. What's gonna happen to the pi? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Yeah, it's gonna cancel out. We, we saw it here on the right side, same thing on the left. We just had pi being multiplied already on both sides. So that's gonna cancel out for us nice and easy. So now what we have is nine equals the radius squared. That's what we have now. Everybody, when we square something, we say this number times itself gives me whatever it is. So really what we're saying here, the radius times the radius equals nine. My party people intuitively thinking, what does the radius have to be? What times itself gives you nine? Yeah, that's going to be three. Three times three is nine. So therefore the radius has to be three. 3 squared equals 9. Yep, that'll work. So my radius equals 3. So the way you can think about it is, I'm going to write this over here. Take the square root of both sides. There's another formal way to think about it. So take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides. What square root means, it's the opposite of squaring. So all you're saying, if you put a square root, which it will look like this, square root of nine, square root of your radius squared, it's gonna cancel your square and your square root because they're opposite operations. The same way that multiplication and division are opposites, same way that addition and subtraction are opposites. Squaring and square root, those are opposites. And so when you think about square root, you don't think of this times itself to get the answer. You think about what times itself gives me the answer. So three times three will give you nine. So yeah, that's the idea of squaring and square rooting. And so I really wanna take a quick second. I'm glad that you guys uh, had that light bulb moment there, but I do also wanna recognize that there are some folks here that are a little ahead of this part and I wanna thank you for remaining patient while we get to the practice. I really do appreciate your patience. And for those of you that are helping each other out here. So um, 
Michael, I double checked. Yeah, so this one is going to be part of our arithmetic reasoning boot camp course. And just to double, triple check this to make sure that I am not missing anything at all, because I believe the beginning said 10, but let me double check. I don't want to have a mistake sitting there. I want to make sure that gets taken care of uh, ASAP. So we're looking here. This is going to be, yeah, this is unit nine. I knew there was a mistake. Yeah, this is unit nine. Arithmetic reasoning, unit nine. That's where circles is. I wrote unit 10 in there. I don't know why that was the case, but it's unit nine. Thanks for being patient on that. Yeah, no worries. So here, the answer is gonna be D again, three centimeters right there. So before we continue, quick question. Do we understand that there are problems where we'll have our formula and we'll be working forward? to get circumference or area, and there'll be problems where we work backwards, where we're given the area or circumference to start off with, and we have to go the other way. Right on. Yeah, so corallus, yeah, the word surface is a really big clue that you're dealing with area, but what really gives it away that solidifies it is when you see a square unit. So square inches, square centimeters, square miles, that always indicates that you're talking about area. Yeah, no problem. All right, so let's go into the next one here. So here's another one, and I'm going to give you guys a chance to do this one. I'm going to say that this is very similar to the previous question. I want to give you two minutes to try this out, and then I'm going to come in and take over and help us out. So here's the timer right next to my big old head, and let's go ahead and make this timer begin with two minutes starting now. All right, looking at our final five, four, three, two, and one. So even if you're feeling like you have no idea what's going on, I got your back. No worries, I got you. So again, we're, we're still just on the third question here. No worries, my party people. We're gonna make sure that we are making progress from where we are. So let's see those answers. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. And let's go ahead and bring my face back into it and get the timer out. Cool. So let's go ahead and give this a shot, my party people. Let's go. So everybody, let me know. What is it that we're looking for? What is it that we're looking for? Jakina, you fixed it. Okay, we'll see. All right, so I see some folks saying radius. A lot more saying diameter, but I see some of us saying radius. Hmm. This is one of the biggest, biggest mistakes that people will make. I called this out in the beginning of class. I told you, at least 99 out of 100 people here will make this mistake. So we're looking for the diameter of the circle. 
I highlighted it in red. I'm gonna circle it. I'm also gonna underline it with a squiggly line. I'm also gonna put a massive LOL right there. Not to make fun of anybody, but just to be the kind of person I am in terms of being a troll. So, and we have fun when we learn. And so we're gonna, we're gonna make fun of our own mistakes. But, and it's only because this is one of the most common mistakes that people make. So hopefully me poking a little fun at it helps you kind of just open those eyes just a little more. So let's go ahead and remember, we're looking for the diameter, but let's see what information we're given. Just like in the previous question, we see that it says, the surface of a circular driveway covers 784 pi square feet. My party people, they don't tell us anything specific. What does the 784 pi mean? Who knows? Okay, says area, why area? What, what's, the, what's the key phrasing that gives away that it's area? Again, surface is a clue, but what is the key phrase? Square feet, yes. Square feet is the key phrase. Corral, so you see that? Again, surface, covering, those are clues to give it away for sure, but the key indicator, square feet. Square feet. Again, the fact that it's a square unit gives away that it's area. That's what gives it away. So what we know is that the area equals 784 pi, let me just make sure I include that, pi square feet. Okay, a party people. For those of us that are feeling freaking out, that we're lost, pause. Do we understand how we got here? We're told find the diameter, and we've identified that we were given the area. Are we good so far? Are we good so far? Are we good so far? Just those two things. The question states right here, what's the diameter? We can read that with our eyes. And number two, this means area because of, again, the phrase here, square feet. Square units is the area. Once we have those two things here understood, what we need to do next is, well, figure out what formula we can use to get to the answer. Again, pop quiz, what's the area of a circle? Give me the formula for the area of a circle. Give me the whole thing. Area equals blank. Give me the whole thing, everybody. Go ahead again. Oh, no worries, Neela. Because remember, Neela, you've had those moments more than most. Hey, I've struggled, I've struggled, I've struggled. But you've been getting it lately. So same story again. We're here to make that progress. But we just got to take small steps. We got this. Yep, thank you, everybody. That's good participation there. Yep, area equals pi times the radius squared. Area equals pi times radius squared. Uh, party people, we know what the area is. They were giving it to us right over here. What's the problem with this formula? We can plug in the area. What's the problem with what you see right there? What's the problem? What's the problem? What is the problem, my party people? No, pi ain't the problem. Radius is the problem. Yes. Radius is the problem. The reason it's a problem is because everybody, remind me again, pop quiz. What is it that we're trying to solve here for in this problem? What are we solving for? Yeah, we're looking for the diameter. This is where experience and word problems is gonna start taking over. So over time, as you continue practicing this, you'll be able to keep a really calm demeanor, realizing that, hey, we're looking for diameter, the only formula I can use for area is with the radius. However, everybody, quick question. If I find the radius, is there a way to go from the radius to the diameter? Is there a way? Is there a way to go from the radius to the diameter? Yeah, there is. There is. Everybody, remind me again, pop quiz. What do I do to the radius to get to the diameter? What do I do with the radius to get to the diameter? Right, we double it. So we have to take a note of that, a mental note at the very least. 
what I'm going to say right here. Found, uh, radius found. Multiply by two to get the diameter. Make that little mental note for yourself. Make that little mental note for yourself. And again, for about the 22, 23 people that I've already admitted that you got got, thank you for being honest. So let's go ahead and fill in what we have. And I'm gonna show you how this problem is gonna be a little easier than you thought. We have 784 pi filled in for the area, and it's gonna equal pi times that radius squared. Everybody, just like in the previous question, just like in the previous one, what do we start doing here? Do we try to do the square root or do we divide by pi on both sides? What's gonna be the easier way to go? Or the right way to go, really? Yeah, divide by pi, we'll start with that. So we'll go ahead, divide by pi, divide by pi. Sounds good. And from there, we are going to cancel out the pi's on both sides, thankfully. So now what we have here is going to be, let me just make this a little smaller. And so now what we have is 784 equals our radius squared. All right, did anybody get stuck here in terms of figuring out what times itself gives you 784? Did anybody feel like they got stuck here? Yeah, Shakina, what I did here was we divided by pi on both sides. And that got rid of the pi here, got rid of the pi there. So now we just have the numbers that were involved. 784 equals radius squared. So I see that a lot of us said, hey, coach, yeah, I definitely struggled figuring out what the square root of 784 was. Let me show you how to use your own knowledge of mathematics to really help you out. My party people, watch this. I'm going <laughs> to... I was gonna say, uh, someone has to buy me a Chipotle burrito bowl if I blow your mind, but I don't think I could eat that much Chipotle. So watch this, everybody. If I'm trying to figure out what squared equals 784, that's the goal. Well, here's what we can do. I'm gonna put that off to the side. Everybody, let's deal with the numbers that we know. Everybody, what's 10 squared or 10 times 10? What's that gonna be? What's 10 times 10? Again, 10 squared is just saying 10 times 10. Yeah, that's gonna be 100. Are we anywhere near 784? Nah, let's try 20. Everybody, what's 20 squared? What's 20 times 20? What's that gonna be? What's that gonna be? 20 times 20, that'll be two times two, which is four. Zero, zero, four, zero, zero, 400, right? 20 times 20, that is 400. Thanks for spamming 400, I really appreciate that. I love your excitement. So with that, next up, Okay, are we still anywhere near 784? Nah, let's try 30. My party people, 30 squared. What's that gonna be? That's not terrible, right? What's, what's 30 squared? Three times three is nine, zero, zero, 900. Okay, where are we going with this coach? What are you doing? Here's what I'm doing with this, everybody. Remember that what we're doing is we are looking to see what number multiplied by itself gives us 784. So my question to you is this, what number when you multiply it by itself ends in a four? What number? Because I know that if 20 squared is 400 and 30 squared is 900, 784 is right there in between these two. I know that for a fact. So I know, I know for a fact that my number that I'm looking for is right here, right there in between. So yeah, two could potentially work. However though, there's another number that'll work. What's another number when multiplied by itself? Again, was it one through nine, everybody, one through nine. What number when you multiply by itself ends in a four? Two times two ends in a four. What about eight times eight? What does eight times eight end in? 64. So, we can try 22 or we can try 28. Both of those would end in a four. Is it gonna be exactly 784? Which one do you think it's gonna be, everybody? The one closer, 900 or 400? Yeah, you can go with 28. That's gonna be your best guess. 
And that strategy that I just used right there, you want to go ahead. Yeah, exactly. The one that's shown in the answer list, especially. But you want to understand how numbers work. You don't need to know the exact square root to get started on it. You know that it ends in a four, then we are able to discern that it's somewhere between 20 and 30. I would bargain that it's closer to 30 than it is to 20. 28, eight times eight ends in a four. Let's try it out. 28 times 28, I think that'll be it. And this is a skill that you wanna learn how to do very quickly. Obviously me showing it to you here is not something that you're gonna be going at that speed with, but here we go, 64. Two times eight is 16, carry the six is 22. Put a zero there, eight times two is 16. Two times two is four, carry the one is five. Add these together, four, eight, seven, and there it is, nice and easy. So we know that our radius is going to be 28. Everybody, are we done? Is the answer D right over there, 28? Is that the answer? Oh, look at that. There's a lot of here people, a lot of people here saying, no, no coach. I knew the whole time that it wasn't gonna be 28. I knew the whole time. We need to double it to get the diameter because remember, we were asked to find the diameter. There are gonna be times, like I told you, where we're gonna be so excited to have actually just figured out the formula and calculated something that we'll take whatever we get and we'll say that that's the answer and you would get trapped into thinking that it's D. We have the radius, get to the diameter, we multiply by two. And so that's why 28 times two, equals 56, this is the diameter. And that's why B is truly the correct answer. That's why B is the correct answer. Now, do yourself a favor. If you were one of the people that I got with that, making you believe that the answer was 28, go ahead, shout yourself out in the chat box. Say I got you, or say that you got me. And for the record, for the recording, we have a, almost a dozen so far and counting. And again, it's a natural part of the process. The ASVAB, they're designed, like those questions are designed to test your ability to sort through information properly. If you're going about it willy nilly and you're just going through it as quickly as you can, you're gonna miss some things. So don't put yourself in that position. We wanna succeed here. Read the question carefully. And always understand that you have to ask yourself, am I at the answer? Am I at the answer and why? Yeah, this one definitely took a little sweat for sure, but I know you're a better academic because of it now. So with that, let's go ahead here and switch it up just a little bit. Here, we're gonna be talking about from the radius or diameter to the circumference. So how do I know that in this question, we're dealing with circumference. How do I know? Well, right over here. What is the distance around the edge of the tire? What is the distance around the edge of the tire? My party people, if we were to draw a tire or a wheel, if we're talking about the distance around the edge of the tire, that is perimeter. But since it's a circle, we can't really say that a circle has perimeter. It's called the circumference. Remember, circumference is the distance around the circle. The circumference is the distance around the circle. So my party people, yep. So what we're looking for here is the circumference. Circumference equals blank. That's what we want to find. That's what we're looking for. The distance around the tire, that is the circumference. So everyone, there are two formulas for circumference. And remember that they're both really the same thing. You choose which one you wanna use based off of the information you have. One formula is the circumference equals two times pi times the radius. And the other one is the circumference equals pi times the diameter. My party people, take a quick look at the information that we're given. Which of these formulas 
is probably better suited for this problem, the first one or the second one? Which one's more suited for this one? Yep. Good participation so far. Yes, the answer is the first formula because they give us the radius. They give us the radius right here. We have a radius of 12 inches. This formula here is the one that uses the radius to find the circumference. And so boom. So notice that if we know our formula, and better yet, we have two formulas that represent the same thing, but we have our formula memorized and we know how to spot circumference and distance around the edge of the circle. That's what triggered all of this. Now we plug in and we solve. Circumference equals two times pi times that radius, which was 12. So let me highlight that right there. And my party people, are we gonna leave pi the same or are we using some sort of replacement for it? Which one is it? Are we just gonna leave pi as pi or should we make it 3.14? How do we know? Yeah, 3.14, right over here. Use pi equals 3.14, right there, right there. There it is. The problem tells us exactly, exactly what I told you in the beginning of class, the problem will always tell you. So here it says use 3.14, so we'll just replace that in as well. Two times 3.14, I'll highlight that in green right there. Multiply by 12, and there it is. So we'll just go ahead and multiply. Everybody, although it looks a little awkward, what's two multiplied by 3.14? What is two times 3.14? What is that gonna be? Two times 3.14 would be 6.28. Absolutely. It'll be 6.28. Circumference equals 6.28 times 12. And then we'll just do 6.28 times 12. So we'll go ahead and do that over here. 8 times 2 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4. Carry the 1 is 5. 6 times 2 is 12. Next line, multiply by 1. 8 times 1. 2 times 1. 6 times 1. Add this all together. And we get our final answer, the circumference. Ending in a 6, then a 3, then a 5, then a 7. So we have ourselves, sorry, we can see that they're at the bottom. There we go. That would be circumference equals 7, 5, 3, 6, with a decimal right there in the middle, 75.36. And so that would give us answer choice D as the correct answer. So... Are we starting to get the idea that if you know your formula and you know how to plug in, the rest is just calculation? Is that starting to make sense, everybody? With geometry, I'm telling you, man, there, there is a formula for every problem. You just have to be able to translate that English into the math, into the formula, then calculate with those numbers. I see. So yeah, if you chose this second formula, the one that says circumference equals pi times the diameter, but you use the radius, notice that your answer is only gonna be half of what the answer should be because you used half of the measurement that you should have put in. If you chose B, that means you use this formula here and yeah, you got the wrong answer because you used the wrong formula. And trust me, Neela, it is not a lot to memorize. I promise you it is not. If I were to tell you right now that I would send you a $100 gift card if you had every geometry formula memorized by the morning, I'm sure everybody here would drop what they're doing, cancel their Netflix subscription, probably finally get off of TikTok and actually put in the work if you wanted that short-term motivation. But a lot of us need to see this as money because this is your career that you're fighting for. So, you know, just being honest there, giving my honest take, you know, treat this like it's the most important thing in the world because it really will be. So with that, let's go ahead here and move forward um, and talk about this next one. And this one's going to be a pretty quick one. And after this, we're going to jump into the time practice. I know exactly which questions I want to present you with. And, and we won't go into the advanced part of today because I feel like it's going to be more important 
to really set in these fundamentals. So with that, everybody, it says, what is the distance across the circular swimming pool? What is the distance across the circular swimming pool? Everybody, what is it that we're looking for here? Arrow says diameter, are you sure? Corrales, diameter, are you sure? Keon also says diameter. Dude, are you sure? Are you sure? Taro, Rob saying circumference. Corrales says now I'm not confident. Shakina says distance. Jay says area. David says distance. What do you mean distance? Yeah, he says, what is the distance? Yeah, that means distance. But what, what, what idea are we talking about in terms of the circle? Circumference. Same as previous one. Circumference, radius. So this is the part of problem solving. Again, where translating English into math has to be a priority. Because, Perales, you were right. You were right. The answer was diameter. We are looking for the diameter. But I want you to know why. I want you to be confident and I want you to be secure in your thinking where me saying, are you sure, doesn't freak you out enough to make you change your answer. So I want us to develop that confidence and I want you to be able to defend your answers by being able to talk about the math that you're doing. We, we just said that in today's PSA, we have got to be able to talk about the math that we're doing if we want to develop confidence. So here's how we know it's the diameter. Let's go ahead and read this in English and draw a perfect picture showing what this means. So we have a circular swimming pool. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and draw a circle and I'm gonna say that there's water. Here's my circular swimming pool. There it is. Excellent. Next, it says, what is the distance across? What is the distance across? Let me draw what that distance across might look like. It could look like this. Everyone, we saw the pictures earlier at the beginning of class. What does that look like? If I show the distance from one side of a circle across, like going through the circle to the other side, what idea is that? What is that called for a circle? Yeah, that's diameter. So notice how taking a brief moment, just taking a brief moment before we get in there, before we start you know, throwing formulas and spaghettis at the wall, before we get into all that, it's very important to visualize and identify the goal of a problem. When they say, hey, what's the distance across the circular swimming pool? All I hear is we have circle, distance across, that's diameter. I know what I'm looking for now, we're looking for the diameter of a circle. Everybody, does that make sense to you so far? How we determined that we're looking for the diameter. Excellent. Good. And again, if it's a no, please be honest. I want to, I'm here taking a mental note of how well we're receptive to this information. So honesty is key. So with that said, my part of people, here we are. Let's put that off to the side. I'm looking for the diameter. And we have to understand what information we're given. I know we're looking for diameter, but I have no idea what formula I'm going to use. I don't know if it's doubling the radius. I don't know if it's the circumference. I don't know if it's area. I don't know yet. So don't assume. You know how to spell assume. You make an ASS out of you and me. Don't assume. So here, you measure the distance around a circular swimming pool and observe that it is 22 pi meters. So most of us are going to be attracted to this phrase here, 22 pi meters. However, there's another phrase that we need to highlight that tells us what that actually means. Everybody, what phrase should I highlight to understand what 22 pi meters means? What is it? What phrase should I highlight here to understand what it means? Fiona, Terrell, yes, right here. You measure the distance around the circular swimming pool, highlighting and emphasizing around the circle. Everyone, if we go around the circle, what idea is it again? What idea is it again? Eros, that's correct. 
that is going to be circumference. That is going to be circumference right here. If we go all the way around, it is 22 pi. All the way around means the circumference. The distance across is the diameter. So that's what we know. We know that we're looking for the diameter. We have the circumference. Everyone, is there a formula where the diameter and the circumference are both included? Is there a formula that we know where they're both included? Hmm. Ah, there is. There is. I appreciate you, Glendis. I appreciate you, Terrell. Yeah, that's gonna be circumference equals pi times the diameter. That's our formula. That's the formula that uses all of the information that we're being presented with. So our circumference right over here, 22 pi meters. So we'll fill that in with 22 pi. Then we fill in pi times diameter. Again, we're looking for the diameter, but look at how easy it can feel. Everyone, what's the one step we have to take to figure out what the diameter is? What's the one step? Yeah, give me a complete phrase here. Give me an action. Give me a verb. Give me, tell me what to do. Don't just say pi. Yeah, that's what we're taking care of. So I know where you're going with it. I know exactly what you're thinking, but I want to make sure that we remain detailed in our approach now. That way we remain detailed and faster later. Yeah, we'll divide by pi on both sides. Thank you guys for being so detailed with us. I know I'm being anal, but I want to make sure that you understand that the detail matters more than ever in the beginning than later on. So here we divide by pi on both sides. Take that out right here, cancels out, cancels out. Luckily, we're good. Nothing else to think about. Everyone, our diameter equals 22. And we know that we're looking for diameter because it's the distance across. No more extra work needed to be done. Answer is B. If you got nervous and if you freaked out, you may have believed that you needed to divide by two to get down to the diameter. No, that's just putting a trick answer there to kind of freak you out. So are we good here, we're math quarter people? Are we good here? Yeah, no worries, yeah. So even if you, even if you got this one incorrect, because remember the point of the classes themselves are not to expect perfection out of you. If you come to a class to learn something that you're not comfortable with, you can't expect perfection. You're here to become better than you were before for sure, but you can't expect perfection during class. On the test, yeah, that's the hope, but don't worry about getting them wrong now. We wanna be right later. So with that said, for those of us that got it wrong, are you confident that you understood why you got it wrong? For those of us that got it wrong, do you understand the why? Why you yourself got it wrong? Right on. Right on, right on. So before we continue, I'm gonna just rewrite the formulas because I see a couple of people here that came in a little late and that's okay. Let me just write this here. So diameter, the relationship between the diameter and the radius, the diameter is double your radius. And then number two and number three, we have our area formula, which is going to be pi multiplied by our radius squared. And then we have the circumference, which is circumference equals pi times the diameter. But since the diameter and radius are directly related, you could also say the circumference equals two times pi times the radius. Both of these would work out, but there you go. These are all the formulas that we're really gonna be looking into today and using, so you're good. There you are. Now, as you guys write this down, let me just see real quick if in the time practice, okay, how can we play this off? So let me go ahead because I do reveal at the top right what topic we're doing, what action, what skill we're working on. So let me see if I do this. Let me see, can I? 
No, I'd have to reveal it. I would absolutely have to reveal it. So with that, here's what I'm going to say, my party people. When we go into the time practice that we're going to go into here momentarily, I want you to refrain from looking here at the top right, cover it with a pinky, cover it with something, if you don't want to know what the goal is and what you're starting with. If, while you practice and really get comfortable with this, if you want to look at it, boom, that's going to be your clue. That's going to tell you, again, what we're starting with and what we're trying to achieve. A part of people, does that make sense? Again, feel free to take advantage of the advantage or feel free to just tackle it on your own. I'll leave that up to you. Sounds good. And Neela, glad you saw that mistake from earlier. Sounds good, Rob. Everybody got it? Again, up to you to use the advantage or not. Up to you. Good. Okay. Perfect. So let's go ahead and skip down over here to our time practice mode. All right, and also, um, before class ends, please remind me, I will go ahead and let you screenshot this problem right over here. That was gonna be our challenge question of the day, if we were able to make it that far. But given that we have 30 minutes left, I wanna make sure that I take the more advisable route here and making sure that we get fundamental practice. So I'm gonna give you uh, three minutes per question here. Let me go ahead and bring that timer up, give you that extra minute, and let's go. Get started on this first one, Math Party people. Timer's up. My face is gone. I'm looking at our final three, two, and one, my part. But go ahead, put those answers in. And if you feel like you're taking a guess, go ahead. Put a question mark next to your answer. Tell me that it's a guess. Totally fine if we're taking a guess, guys. There's no shame in that. Oh, no shame. Only shame would be in not trying at all. 
because you're missing out on the experience that we need to continue raising our scores. So, all right, I see your answers. Appreciate that, my part of people. Now let's go ahead and bring my ugly face back into frame and let's try this out. So, everybody, if you took a look right over there at the top right corner, we see that it says circumference to the radius or diameter. Sounds good. Which one of these two are we looking for, everybody? Are we looking for the radius or the diameter? Which one are we looking for? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. We're looking for that radius. Looking for that radius. So what is it that we need to do to get there? Again, don't assume anything yet. First, we write out that we're looking for the radius because it says here, what is the radius of the swimming pool? So that's what we want. Okay. Now let's understand the information that we're given. We're given this. We're given that the distance around a circular swimming pool is measured to be 24 pi meters. Everybody, what are we dealing with? What does the 24 pi meters mean? What does the 24 pi meters, what does that mean? Yeah, that's the circumference. That's the circumference. Can anybody provide me with the evidence? What's the key phrase that really gives that away? What's the key phrase that gives it away? Oh, Neela, great question. Hold that thought. I got you. Yeah, we're talking about a circle and we're describing the distance around right here. The distance around the circle right there. Distance around a circular or circle given to us right there. This is the circumference. This is the circumference. So naturally, naturally, at this point, you're probably thinking I have terrible handwriting. So let me go ahead and fix that real quick. But naturally, at this point, if you know your formulas, you may be thinking circumference, blah, blah, blah. So at this point, you may be thinking, huh, I know that there are two formulas for circumference. Which one should I use? Well, remember, one of the formulas only shows the diameter. The other formula uses the radius. Because we were told to find the radius, which formula should we use? Yeah, there it is. Appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all. Yeah, circumference equals two pi r. That's the one that we should use because the radius is already built into the formula. So once we solve, we're done. But if you went with the diameter formula accidentally, it's a, it's a very easy fix, very easy fix. So allow me to show you here, my part of you. We'll go ahead and use both formulas. Circumference equals two pi r. And I'll show you the other one, circumference equals pi times diameter. Okay, so we'll plug in the 24 pi into both and I'm gonna show you the magic that'll happen. 24 pi equals two pi r. Just focus on this one for a moment. I got you. Yeah, so Neela, great job there getting to that point. When we're here, first thing we can do is we can divide out the pi from both sides. We can absolutely do that which will cancel that here, cancel that there. And Neela, that's where we, you see that you're at here. You have 24 equals two times the radius. So Neela, think about it. We're trying to get the R by itself. We see that it's two multiplied by R. So if I wanna get rid of that multiplication of two, what do I do? What's the opposite of multiplying by two again? Right, that's gonna be dividing by two. And that's going to be on both sides. Be specific there, my part of people. But yeah, we'll divide by two on both sides. And we get our radius equaling 12. And we're there. And we're there. Now, let's suppose that we accidentally used this formula instead. Well, that's no matter. Go ahead. Plug in what you have for the circumference. 24 pi equals pi times diameter. We can still get to this point, even if we uh, feel like we messed up, because what can happen now is we can divide by pi like we knew we could. If we do that, that just cancels out. But what you get 
is 24 is your answer. But remember that you used the diameter version of the formula. So 24 is the diameter. That's not your answer. We want the radius. And so remember that the diameter is the whole thing. The radius is half of that. So this is where our natural understanding comes into play. Oh, wait, I didn't solve for what I needed to solve for. I'm one step away with this formula. Okay, we'll divide by two. Divide by two, and we get 12 equals the radius. And there we have it. Boom, no worries. So my party people, even if we didn't get this one right, do we understand the mistake that we made? And for those of you that did get it right, do you feel more secure and more confident that even if you did it the other way, you would have caught that mistake? Again, this, this is all about, again, just adding a little more confidence bit by bit by bit. At first, it feels like you're scratching your nails against a wall. Trust me, I know. Not only did I go to school just like you, I also got, went to get my bachelor's degree, got my master's degree in math. I've sat through this for a long time. And then for 10 years, I have basically been teaching and grading other people's math. So I know the pain and the unfortunate circumstances that we have to go through while we learn it. But once we have that confidence, it's a beautiful thing. We can run with it and we can be sure that we can talk about what we're doing. So give it that time for yourselves, gang. Give it that time. So I found the reason that I divided by two over here is because we found the diameter, but the problem told us that we needed the radius. And so I know that if I had the diameter, well, the diameter is the whole distance across the circle. The radius is half of that. And that's why you see divide by two. Because I cut the diameter in half to get the radius up here. No, Grizel, no, 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 not at all. So great question. So question from Grizel, is the circumference the same as the diameter? If so, in that case, we just divide the circumference by two to get the radius. Not quite, Grizel. The circumference is the distance around the circle. The diameter is the distance across the circle, going through the inside, the straight line distance from here to here. The circumference goes all the way around. Those are two different measurements. So Grizel, let me know if that makes sense. Be honest, you wrote the wrong formula down. No worries there. I got you, Grizel. No worries. No worries at all. All right. So who is ready to try another one out? Who's ready to try another one out? All right, we should have time for at least maybe two, maybe three. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a go. So let me bring the timer up. Get my face out of the way. And here we go, my party people. Three, two, and one.
and looking at our final two. One and time, math party people. How we doing? How we doing? How are we doing here? Put those answers in. Put a question mark next to your answer if it is a guess, as always. And let's get to work here. I'm really excited to see this unique problem here because this type of problem, it goes beyond just a simple formula, plug it in, solve, and you're done. This is, I would consider, more so on the true arithmetic reasoning side of things. So let me get my face back in the frame so I can really just you know, use my hand gestures to get you guys going. So here's the thing. Let's understand this naturally, everybody. I want, I want, I want us to really understand this naturally because once we understand this naturally, then we can work to see how the math fits in. So guys, before we start trying to you know, fit math in wherever we see, let's just understand this naturally. What is the question asking us to find? It says about how many feet will the wheel travel after 80 revolutions? Everyone, when we say one revolution, what's the word that starts with an R or an S? Not math word. It's just a, a word that starts with an R or an S that is another way to say revolution. Rotation, that's the R word, one rotation. What's the S word? The rotation is probably the more proper one to use. S is a little more, you know, it's a little more slang, but a spin, yeah, one spin around. So that's what a revolution is. One whole revolution means, again, one complete, one complete when we revolve around the object once. So we're talking about one rotation or 80 rotations here. But I've emphasized this like what, five times already? Here's why. Here's where this comes into play. If we knew, everybody, let's take this smaller example here. Let's go ahead and say that we knew that when this wheel spins, that when this wheel spins, let me just grab this. So everybody, when this wheel spins, what we get, let me actually give myself more room to do this. When this wheel spins around, every time it goes around once, yes, I'm turning my iPad, not my fingers. When you spin around once, let's suppose that we know that one spin equals, let's say five feet. Everybody, if we know that every time it spins around one time is five feet, what how far do we go after two spins how far do we I'm, I'm just giving a spitball of a number this is just an example shakina yeah it's just an example so let's suppose that one spin is five feet yeah two spins would be 10 feet okay let's make it a little harder how many would eight spins be eight spins would be what eight spins would be 40 feet yeah because every spin is five in this little example scenario. So what does that mean, everybody? What this means that we can do here is that if we want to find 80 rotations, 80 revolutions, we just need to find how far we go after one revolution and then multiply it by 80. Because that's exactly what will happen here. For 80 spins, in this case, we would take that five feet times 80, and that would be 400 feet. My party people, does the example that I'm giving here make sense? If we wanna find the distance you go after a certain number of revolutions, well, slow it down. Let's find one revolution first, one spin, and then we just multiply that by 80. Let me know if that makes sense in principle, because I, I don't want you guys to think about formulas right now. I don't want you to think about formulas. All I want you to think about is just the visualization here. That's really what I want us to focus on because once we have the visual down, you'll see how that formula fits in. I got you, Keon. So again, the goal is to find out how far we go with 80 revolutions. We will just focus and concern ourselves with one revolution and multiply that by 80. Let's go ahead and show where this all comes into play, everybody. Well, let's think about it. One rotation. 
One revolution. What idea do you think we need to apply here to get one revolution? What's, what idea is that? We're trying to go all the way around that circle. What idea is that? Paula, Paralis, absolutely, Lavanya, yep, yeah, you got it. Yes, that is circumference. And so because of that, my math party people, here we go. We'll go ahead and say right over here, we will find the circumference first. Because again, that is one revolution. That is one revolution. And once we have the first revolution, everybody, what do we do once we find that circumference to get that final answer? What do we do with that circumference? Yeah, we are going to multiply by 80. Step two will be multiply by 80 to get 80 revolutions. Again, I am not talking about any formulas yet, but does it make sense that to get one revolution, that's, that's one circumference? And so if we want 80 revolutions, that's 80 circumferences. Does that make sense before we get started? No worries, Michael. I'm hoping that you understand where we can go from here. I really do hope you understand that. All right, everybody else got it? Cool. All right, let's go ahead and do the math here. So if we're trying to find the circumference, everybody, which formula do you want to use? The one with the radius in it or the one with the diameter in it? Which one's the better one to use? Which one is the better one to use? Tara, why do you say radius? You said radius, right? Uh, so I'm assuming you're asking a question. You're not answering my question. So Tara, why'd you say the radius one? Because it has radius in the formula. Almost there. That's 90% there. Arrow says it better here. Arrow says they gave us the radius. Yeah, we're given the radius right here. Because we're given the radius, it's a good idea to use the circumference formula that has the radius, not the diameter, because they give us the radius. Again, take what the problem gives you. You know, we know we need to use circumference. Oh, I see that we have radius. Now let's go ahead and apply that. Exactly. Cool, I'm glad, that, I'm glad that we're having these moments, guys. I'm glad that we are. I'm glad it's making just a little more sense. So we'll use the radius one. So two times pi times the radius. We'll plug in what we have. So we'll have the circumference equals two times 3.14 because they tell us to use 3.14 for pi right there loud and clear and then we multiply by that radius which is eight so i'm going to do the math for you here because i know we're running out of time but i'm going to just say hey we do the math it is 6.28 multiplied by eight and then i'll set that equal to whatever that is uh, let me do some mental math six times eight that'll be 48 plus 1.6, so 49.6, 49.6, 50.24. 50 50.24 is what that'll be. Someone check my work with a calculator. We have 50.24 feet, and that is again, one revolution. That is one revolution right there. So everybody, what did we say we need to do? Once we have, one revolution, we do what with it to get the final answer? Yeah, now we multiply by 80. Booyah, and we're good. So we'll take the 50.24. We will multiply this by 80. So we'll just have a bunch of zeros here on that first row, no worries. Then we start off with a zero, four times eight, that'll be 32. Two times eight, that's gonna be 16, carry to three is 19. Zero times eight is zero plus the one. 5 times 8, it'll be 40. Bring everything down. 0, 2, 9, 1, 0, 4. And we have ourselves two decimal places. So right there. And so we have 80 revolutions equals 4,019.2 feet. And so I believe I may have messed something up here. Let's just double check here. We have the 80. I think the answers may be off by a tenth here. Let me double check. 
Yeah, it should be 4,000. It absolutely should be 4,000. So our answers all just need to have a zero in front of them. That's on me. I was excited to jump to this one. Didn't even realize it had a little error. But that's how we would get to the answer. So, you know, ignoring that slight mistake at the end, my apologies as always. We never want those in there. But I want to make sure that we understand how we got to this answer. Again, if we wanted 80 revolutions, we find one revolution and then multiply by 80. Do it 80 times. That's what 80 times means. If we're doing something 80 times, multiplying by 80. So with that said, <laughs> you scared me, coach. I mean, it definitely can be a little scary. It definitely can be. So my part of Google, how are we feeling? I just did the math again. Yeah, it is 50.24. So that was correct just to make sure I check my work. And if we multiply that by the 80, um, yeah, that was 4,019. So it looks like that was uh, just slightly off. It was just by a factor of 10. So I know how to correct that with my uh, program that I built out for that. So, oh yeah, for sure. That's the advantage you have with the program. You get the chance to look back at your recordings. That way you can see how, how a fresh set of eyes, especially after going through it the first time, how that really helps you out. Absolutely, guys. Absolutely.